Here we go. So guys, I've wanted to make this video for a couple of weeks. Now, I haven't made the video because I didn't want to be a buzzkill and point out the obvious, but today, like, it's kind of validated the reason I was going to make that video a couple of weeks ago. It's really obvious today that I should make this video today, and it is about the really unavoidable problem with endgame cards, okay? Now, the best way to start this is to compare this to last year. Last year, we had GOAT cards at the end of the year. There was five of them. They were the best players in NBA history. And they still had a level of variation between those cards, okay? The big difference between GOAT cards and Endgame cards is 2K have said. Endgame cards are going to have the best signatures and animations, uh, which, you know, puts them in a completely different tier to GOAT cards last year. Although they were, they were overpowered and they were good. They're not anywhere near the level these endgame cards are at. You know, I've got Will is the only endgame card I've got right now. And he's perfect. He's just a perfect card. Like, from every st standpoint, stats, badges, animations, everything, tendencies, he's perfect. So when you've dropped a perfect card in June, and your strategy for the rest of the year is to continue to drop more perfect cards, it creates a couple of problems, guys. And 2K have put themselves in a corner because of this. Now, I knew today that these endgame cards would be heavily scrutinized. Now, let's go back a couple of weeks, right? When Dirk dropped, it was like, oh my god, this is the best card we've ever seen in the game. Then Wilt dropped, it was like, oh my god, this is the best card we've ever seen in the game. And today, we've got, oh, we've got endgame cards. I'm not sure about that jump shot. That's where we are today. When you set the bar as best signature, best sigs and animations, unless you continuously chuck the same three jump shots on every card, and the, the tray escape on every card, or, or the curry escape on every card, people are going to start complaining. This is a problem that 2K have created, and actually we're at a point now where height, very soon, we're not there today, very soon we're going to be at a point where height is the only thing that's relevant. They're all going to have great jumpers. They're all going to have great sigs. They're only going to have, have great animations. So we are sleepwalking into the end of the year where the only level of excitement we have left is, oh my God, there's a 7 foot 3 endgame card. Oh my God, there's a 7 foot 4 endgame card. Oh my God, there's a Yao endgame card. Taco's out now. M Murasan might be out now. We're at a point where it's so hard for these cards to outdo the last cards. That people are actually within, you know, five endgame cards being dropped. The fifth endgame card was dropped today. People are complaining already. People are already complaining. The specific complaint they have is about Jokic. And the complaint specifically is people aren't a fan of Ray Allen's base. I am. I'm just putting it out there. I have no complaints about this. This is awesome. To be honest, I don't really care. Like, I'm still going to run my offense through Hero Jordan. I picked up Michael Finley yesterday as well. Congratulations to me. So I've got Finley as well. Those two are the two best ball handlers in the game for me. Best, easily the best two primary ball handlers. And I'm going to continue to run through them. So all I was ever really going to use Jokic for was as a primary defender. So he's going to play point guard and clamp up. That's what Jokic is going to do for me. That's before they released the card. But I, I, you know, I did have the thought. I was like, well, what if he has the trade skip? What if I can get him open? What if I can really run with him? And then I looked at the card. I'm kind of staying off Twitter. I've seen a little bit of Twitter and I can see it all going on. I can see people kind of questioning things. He's got the d row size up. He's got the Trey Young escape. And he's got, in my opinion, one of the best jump shots in the game. And people are unhappy with it. It's wild. So my best, like, my worst case scenario is I can use him as a, as a lock. And I am going to do that. That's fine. I have no issue with these things. Like, if we get to a point where every card has 25 and base 3, it's boring. That's boring. I'm sorry, like, we're just gonna, we're, this is gonna become so boring. Like, the, the last season will be one of the deadest seasons ever. Because, like I said, we're just gonna sit here. Every card's gonna have set shot 25, and we're gonna go, oh, 6 11. So, you know, he's, he's a point guard, and that's fine. And yeah, that, that is good, but we've got other point guards coming. This ain't gonna be the last one. And at this point, this is, I'm more than happy with this. He's gonna run for the rest of the year without question. But you've got people criticizing the cards now. We got to the fifth endgame card. <coughs> But for all the kind of over-the-top hype of these cards being absolutely perfect, went out the window, and we started scrutinizing every tiny little thing. So you can see with Shaq, he has got set shot 25. It's a great jumper. It's a set shot. So, you know, you're not going to... Like, it's a really hard shot to get off the dribble. It really is, guys. Like, I, I, I don't know. I had Netaliki. I, I ran him for two months. He, he'll sit in the corner and do a, an incredible job for you and hit 
your uncontestable three. So it is a great jump shot, but you're not going to be able to move with him and, and have, you know, get open with him to get that jumper off uh, with any level of consistency. It's really hard. They've given Kobe base three. Again, it's a jump shot people are going to be happy with. That's a way easier shot to get off on the dribble. To me, Kobe is perfect. Like, this, this is the card I want. I really want this card. Kobe, like, yeah, he's going to get open very easily. And he's going to fire off one of the quickest jump shots in the game. So, Kobe is amazing. So, I don't know. That, that, I don't think there's much criticism of Kobe. Pe people, I don't think... Yeah, people are criticizing Jokic. I don't know if they're criticizing Shaq. And I think Harden is the other one that people are criticizing. Now... He's got Curry base, guys. Like, I, I've used Steph Curry for six weeks this year. It's by far one of the best jumpers in the game. You know, off, off that escape into that jumper, you should be getting open and knocking that down pretty easily. I, I don't... I, I'm struggling to see the problem. So, the, two things have happened here. The first thing that's happened is 2K put themselves in a the corner. By creating a concept that just doesn't have any longevity. You saw it yesterday. People were on Twitter going, I'm just not, I don't feel excited. I don't feel excited. I feel excited. It was going on a lot. And I understand it. It's, you know, I get it. I wasn't that excited. I, I was kind of, I wanted to see what happens. I was interested. But I wasn't like, you know, when they announced Will, I was like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. Now we're at a point where it's like, right, it's going to be another endgame card. We kind of know what it's going to be before it drops. So in terms of animations... It's going to be basically the same. He's either going to have the Trey Lena or the Steph Lena. Or he's going to have the Trey Escape or the Steph Escape. Everything else is going to be the same. So we know exactly what it is. We know what the dunk package is going to be. We know what the tendencies are going to be. We know what the stats are going to be. We know what the badges are going to be. So the only thing that we can really complain about is the base. The jump shot base. That's the only thing we can complain about. And we are doing it. We are doing it. I have no issues. Kobe's going to be amazing. Kobe is going to be amazing. The problem is, at some point, we're going to get a 6, 10, 6, 11 shooting guard that will make Kobe redundant in the game. That's the reality. Because that's what endgame is going to be about. It's going to come down to height, ultimately. Shaq, I've got no issues with again. Like, for what I would like Shaq to do, I mean, if I use Shaq the same way I use Bob Netalicki, I've got a 7'1", seven 7'7", seven seven wingspan, big-bodied Bob Netalicki. Like, you can't complain. You can't complain. I don't, I don't know if anyone is complaining about him. I don't think so. In terms of Weber, you know, they've given him jump shot uh, 110, which is interesting. That's Chet's jumper. So I haven't used Chet. I'm not even going to comment on it, to be honest with you. Uh, he's got Jordan's dunk package, which means he can dunk from the free throw line, which is kind of amazing. But I know it's a good jumper. Again, no complaints. He's Chris Weber's probably the best small forward in the game now, 6'9", 7'3". But then again, we will get a small forward endgame card pretty soon. That's going to be 6'10", 6'11", Giannis, whoever. Um, and then everyone's going to go, Chris Weber's rubbish depending on the jump shot Giannis gets. And, like, it's just taken, like, a lot of the, the creativity, a lot of the fun out of this now. Like, I'm a fan of variation. Like, I like using cards like Jordan. Like I said, I picked up Finley yesterday. I'm so excited to use that card. Um, just because of his dribbles and his animations. When you give them to every card, you're going to get to a point where people just start complaining because one or two things isn't exactly the way they want it. I'm really excited about using all these cards. I'm going to get Harden. I'm going to get Jokic. I'm going to get Weber. If I can get Shaq and Kobe, I'll happily pick them up. But you can't be complaining. Like, this, it's, just, it's weird. Didn't one of them have Rudy's jumper? I can't remember. I might be wrong. It might have been an invincible card. Uh, no, yeah. They're fine. They're fine. You're talking about split seconds. If you can get open, they've all got jumpers that will be knocked down from Limitless. Just, just, get, just learn to get open. And, and all of these cards are amazing. And now you've got to kind of switch your mindset as well. Like, you know, what are these? What, what are the purpose of these cards at this point in the game? How competitive are you going to play at this point in the game? How competitive have you played up until this point in the game if you're complaining? Harden's going to be tons of fun to use. He's going to be like my go-to triple threat online card. N no doubt I'll use him. Weber will run. He'll play an unlimited. Jokic will run. He'll play an unlimited. No issues there. Still the best level 40 they've had this year. Shaq will run as well. Um, if, if I had him and Kobe will run as well if I have him. But you can't expect these cards. I know the concern is, oh, you know, that jump shot isn't quite good enough. So I know we're going to get a better card in two weeks. Doesn't matter what jump shot they've got, guys. You're going to get a better card in two weeks anyway. That's what endgame is. They're the best possible cards. So it is what it is. <laughs> but yeah, the concept is, is a tricky one. 2K have, have put themselves in a real hole now for this season. And I really don't think we're going to get any hype or major excitement. Until we get Yao, Taco, maybe Kareem, Giannis. 
I think there's a handful of players now that can actually generate excitement at this point in the game with the end game concept to go that card significantly better than Wilt or significantly better than Dirk. It's a, it's a tough spot they put themselves in. That's the video, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Until next time, thanks for watching.